Hey everybody, Georgia Jaguar, StampinGeorgia.com. Thanks for stopping by today. I'm excited to share some of the things that I've learned with Brusho. And I'm gonna start with one technique. It was the first one that I tried. It's not one that I made up. It's one that a teammate shared with me in an email and she sent me the link to a blog post by Lydia Fiedler. And if you have ever seen any of the work Lydia does, she is an artist and she does amazing work but she um, laid out the process really well in her video and it was easy enough for me to follow. And then I've learned a few tips and tricks along the way that I'm gonna share with you. I'm kind of calling these brusho tips escapades really. So here's the first one I'm gonna start with. I used the same technique on both of these cards and there really is no ink other than what se the sentiment is stamped in ink. But the rest of it is all done with the brush o pigment powders. So one of the first things that you may notice, I am wearing an apron today. I don't normally wear an apron to do my stamping. I don't even wear one when I'm cleaning or cooking most of the time. Um, but I need to protect my clothes and so do you. So you'll want to dress appropriately, perhaps put on dad's big shirt, just like you did when you went to kindergarten when, to get started. Also. To protect your hands you are probably going to get some pigment powder on your hands as you hold the stamps as you work with the pigment powders they're very um, light and powdery and so they get in the air they will stick to things and as, as water and moisture touches them they're going to open up and spread on your hands or surface or wherever they are and so you're just I'll share some tips that I learned to help eliminate some of the mess, but um, gloves might be a good idea if you don't like to get your hands dirty. So come on, let's get started. So here are those cards again. I'll give you a little chance to look at them. They are both stamped on watercolor paper. So I used my stitched shapes oval, the largest one, and I just cut out a bunch so that I could play and kind of every single one of them turns out a little bit different. And that's the beauty of this. There's no right or wrong way. And so I recommend having several ready to go when you're ready to start using the pigment powders. Protect your surface that you're stamping on. I recommend having some paper towel, something that you can um, use underneath as you spritz so that you don't end up with it all over you or wet all over your work surface that will just help. The pigment powders, um, I watched a video by Stampin' Up and they had punched several holes. I thought I didn't trust myself so I started with one and actually one was plenty for me and I'm just using a thumbtack I know some people have got color coordinated thumbtacks. This is what was in my husband's work drawer and so I am just their upholstery tacks using that and this is the Prussian blue there's also a moss green yellow gamboge which is more of an orange and then brilliant red I used all the colors in my scene with the exception of the red so I'm gonna start with my little oval my watercolor paper oval and I'm going to start with the largest stamp in the scene and that is the mountain and what I'm going to do I'm going to just lay my paper towel there so I can do this and photopolymer stamps have a little bit of a stick to them and so it naturally the powders stick without getting the surface of your stamp very wet or, or wet at all and so I am just tapping lightly some of the blue you know whatever method I don't trust myself you can go ahead and punch more holes but what you want to remember with this is a little goes a long way it might not look like much but seriously a little goes a long way so now I'm adding a little bit of green and then my next step is to add water. I am going to 
pull this away from my work surface so that I don't end up with water all over where I want to stamp. And you just want to get that stamp good and moist and you're going to see that I have more water. That's another reason to have the paper towel. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp my mountain scene. And what's really cool is this will change. Every single one you will do will turn out differently. And the reason that I had two cut or three or four, I can go back and just add a little bit more moisture to that same stamp without adding any more pigment. And there will be enough for me to get another one. And as that sinks in and dries, it's going to continue to look better and better. It will change appearance. So I'm going to set that stamp aside. And again, your stamps are going to get stained with this powder. You just That's something you just have to be willing to live with. The next thing I'm going to do is take my trees. I'm going to do something very similar. I'm just going to slide these over so that you can see. I'm going to lay that upside down and I'm going to put mostly green on these. And again, a little goes a long way. And I am going to add just a little bit of Prussian blue to my green on this. And I'm also going to put a little bit of yellow in there. There are varying pigments in all of these. And so they're going to turn out differently every single time. So I'm set that, pull that aside, get my image ready or my paper ready. Spritz my stamp. And there's definitely enough there to go around for another try. You can actually, you know, try to get more than two if you want to. So there's two of them. And the next thing I'm going to do is add my water in front. And this I just want blue in. And I'm going to set that over so I don't get the pigment powder on my work surface. And you probably can barely see if you can see it at all. Just little touches of that powder. And again, a little. I'm just going to use a mist on that. Now you can see why I told you, don't be afraid to get messy. It's going to be messy. And there I've got my water. And then I'm going to take this other stamp. Now you can kind of see why people will say this is not for the faint at heart. I'm going to add just a little bit of green. And a little yellow. This is going to be my land. This one, add a little more water. And you can see it does get a little bit lighter with each stamp, but it still looks good. And then last but not least, I'm going to add my setting sun. Easy to say, right? And I'm going to use that over that stamp. I'm just going to set that aside. Kind of a little one, so I don't have to work quite so hard at that one. Spritz that with a little bit of water. One setting sun. Two. So there are the nice little scenes. 
are finished. And I just go over those cards again. Here is the one just accented with a lots of label framelit and the plank um, embossing folder. Plank embossing folder on this one as well. And then just framed with a larger layering, layering oval. The Thinking of You comes from the Feather Together stamp set. And so what's really cool about this card, the only ink on the card is what's stamped in the sentiment. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you'll give this fun direct-to-stamp brush-out technique a try.